starting today, what was your guys's? Anybody have any thoughts on today? I don't know. Go ahead, shoot me. Honestly, I thought like today was some pretty good Rocket League. There was a lot of series that I was really invested in. I mean, I know obviously getting ahead of myself, but that last series of Vitality, Lumen, like I was nervous for them. You know, like I love those series where yeah. as a viewer, like I really feel the intensity in what's going on. I, I felt that a lot today. So I think overall today was was pretty solid Rocket League. And I think it kind of lived up to what we experienced the first day as well. Yeah. Breed? Yeah, I mean, it was pretty good. You had, like, interesting shit happen, but at the same time, you know, kind of everything expected went down. Like, the top eight, I would say, are the probably the top eight best teams, which is really good. All the quarterfinals mm -hmm. are, like, insane. But, you know, you had things like power beating rule one and, like, crazy shit like that. You had an NA powerhouse. Uh, yeah. Okay, never not, not powerhouse, but NA teams facing off for, like, elimination. So there's exciting stuff, yet we got the best teams through to the top eight in front of crowds, so... It's kind of setting up perfectly, to be honest. Yeah, I thought it was. I thought it was honestly a pretty uh, good day. I think the only thing is, I, I feel like you kind of can still predict who's gonna win it going into it a lot of the series. Um, but other than that, I do think it was fun because we did get some upsets and we get some rematches as well um, from yesterday for tomorrow. But also, I also kind of thought the day was super long. I don't yeah. know if you guys think like. Dude, I streamed for, I did a watch party the whole day, and the matches, there was, what, 17 matches? Something That's like insane. that, right? Like, is that not, is that the most there ever has been? I mean, uh, if we're just, be. if we're just being honest, like, it's just clear that it's got to be, like, Epic or Blast, whoever's controlling it. They're just trying to cut costs. Because, like, no sane person would put rounds three, four, and five on one Swiss day. Unless you're trying to save an extra day of not yeah. buying people. So, like, I feel like it's just definitely a, a move to save money, which sucks, but it was, I guess, their only choice. But, again, another example yeah. of them kind of just saving money in another way. It would be badass if the matches were, like, besides seven series and only being streamed, um, like, or only being in public to the people where they can watch it, the crowd. So, tomorrow, for those that don't know, you have four quarters, and the next day you have just three matches. So there's seven total series and people are traveling, you know, across the country and, you know, from out of the country, all these hours. And I do think it would be like Reed said, instead of having like a 10 hour day, I wish you could somehow like, instead of caught it, I mean, they're cutting costs makes sense, but if we could, what they usually do, Reed, did they always do this or did they ever do round five in person? Uh, I'm pretty sure it used to be Wednesdays was round one and two was i think wednesdays might have just been round one i think thursdays were round two and three and then yeah fridays were round four and five in front of a crowd because last year i i had the lg rope uh route and yeah. i went oh two but then i played falcons in my one two match in front of a crowd and then i played moist in my two two match and those were both in front of crowd which was dope but this year they kind of they got rid of that one day so now they can't even and they don't even have friday for a crowd so a lot of teams just get unlucky, to be honest. I think the worst thing about the super long format is, like, imagine being any of those three teams of Power, Cole, and LG and literally playing and sitting in that studio for almost 12 hours around yeah. there and just just to not make that next day. Like, that's got to be so mentally taxing if, if you're one of them. Like, I mean, I think that old format that Chicago just mentioned, I think that's a lot better. And I know, like, I mean, you know, Kep also talks about it. Like, a lot of people are traveling to this. I mean, there's people paying thousands of dollars from flights, like, Part of the reason why I didn't go is because a flight from Atlanta to Copenhagen is like two thousand dollars. I'm not doing all that. So yeah, for the people that sure. are doing that, I feel like they should get a little bit more than seven series. You know what I mean? So yeah, no, I'm with it. I'm with it. Um, all right, let's jump into it today. So these are the overall stats after both days. So immediately, I'm thinking loss was at the top yesterday, and or he what was he? Nupo was up the top yesterday to one point five. So his average rating dropped yeah. a little bit, but that's still really impressive. So yesterday, for those that don't know. Reed was saying an average of over one is, what'd you say was average? Probably. One is average, like 1.3 is really fucking good. And then like a 1.5, which he had is insane for like a, yeah. a day of games. Yeah. That's, it, it was insane. I mean, you were talking about him yesterday, Flitz with Lost, how he was, if he could keep it up. And I mean, dude, he's at the top still. Yeah, I mean, he had, I mean, you know, there's no, no denying it. I mean, he kept it up. I, I thought he couldn't. He proved me wrong. I mean, that Gen G series, uh, Fury, obviously we'll get into it later, but I mean, that went, that went the distance. That was really close. Could have gone either way. But I mean, Fury, I mean, look, Yan's right there with him at three. 
Um, I think they're a team that people really have to look at heading into this quarterfinals because, I mean, man, I mean, just look at that. First and third, like, that's not that's not something you want. And Jorfino's right there at the bottom, too, at, like, what, like 12 or something like that? Like, yeah. three of them are performing right now. And that, that's really impressive to see. Yeah, I mean, everyone, I will say, remember Daniel yesterday was at, for those that don't know, Daniel yesterday, day one, was at a point four. He had the lowest rating of anybody. And, I mean, today he jumped up, what, like 15 spots? So, yeah. he obviously had a decent day, jumped up to a point nine. Um, well, anybody the crazy else? Thing is, or go ahead. The crazy thing is, I'm pretty sure after the first series they won, he was still in the bottom five. So, he probably, his second series had to be really good. That they beat, uh, who was it? Power, I guess. Yeah. Or maybe it was their third. Yeah, he dropped a 1.7 against Power, which kind of saved him. But so they, still, like, yeah. Yeah. Without that Power series, he's, he's still, like, probably, you know, towards the bottom of ratings, which is insane. Kind of helped him. A one point, he had a 1.1 in his first series day. Then he had a point or a one pretty much. And then he had the 1.7 work. I mean, that's a shitload, yeah. So he's basically warming up. Is what hopefully Ooh, I like for that. SNA. For, he's, yeah. he's warming up for he's getting better each stage, you know. Yeah, that's a good song. Top eight, he's about to show out. Laniel. Yeah, are we gonna get Laniel <laughs> again? How'd that even come about? Just one land? No. Someone I think started... it was um wasn't it San Diego? Or no, no, LA. It was one of those. I think it was LA. Yeah, I don't know. Like back when it was Lanyol. back it was, it was the one that you won in Chicago. I think that was when it like became a thing. I could be wrong. I wanna say I was around there. I have no clue. Yeah, I don't yeah. I don't really remember. Um all right, are you guys ready to jump into it? Are you guys have any other thoughts? Oh, I think we're ready to hop in. All right, so we are going to start today, guys. Remember, how it kind of works is we are going to go through each match, but some of them, if there's not much to talk about, we're not going to talk about it much. If there is, we're going to pull it up, and we're going to talk about it more. Uh, but jumping right in, do it. Elevate versus KCP. I didn't, I don't know. I'll be honest, I didn't even care to watch this series. Uh, is that fucked up to say? No, it's the truth. <laughs> it's the yeah, truth. Fair enough. I mean, you got to pick I between mean, one or two, yeah. you know? I mean, that's, that's, I hate to be that guy, but that's got to be the, like, least cared about match of the entire tournament. It's just how it is. Yeah. I, I didn't really, I, I couldn't really, it's hard. I don't know what it is. It's just hard for me to get into series unless it's a big matchup that's, like, talked about a lot or something or has bigger names or the, or they, if it's an org that's done a lot or has history. I can't really get into it. Yeah, no, I mean, just nothing happened. Nothing crazy, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Jumping into the next one, LG Limitless. LG needed to win this series to bounce back. Flitz, you said they needed, like, what, a 3-0? You said anything less than a 3-0, you think it could be a rough day? And they came out I mean, with a 3-0. Yeah, this is exactly what I was talking about. I mean, they needed this exact result in order to get back into that series, which obviously we'll talk about it later, but they were able to, clearly. Um, I think if they drop a game here, we don't see the run that they made today. Yeah. Um, and you know, they, they were, they were hella close and it all started off with this first series. So I was glad that they were able to come in and do what they needed to do. Yeah. Limitless goes, oh, and so Limitless ended up actually, I mean, what did we, what'd you ask yesterday, Reed? Do they win a game or something? <laughs> Yeah, um, and did they win a game? Yep. Dude, they, they got they got know. next major man. I mean, let to me know, they're looking let me better. Know they win a game, Cap. They, they're looking better. They were so they were literally so close against OG man. Next major, Limitless gets their first game. I'm telling. Do telling. they though? I mean, yeah, they maybe. do. They maybe. do. Come back to know. this. I promise you. <laughs> All right, y'all. You want bet? I'm <laughs> I'm not a betting man. Oh, maybe okay. I am a little bit, but yeah, yeah. You know, not 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 here. Not here. All right. No. All right. Notice. <laughs> um, so for those that don't know as well, jumping into the mid matches, we had there was an A and B stream, so you couldn't really watch both at once. And so the first one, I think everyone was watching. Did we watch on I forget I'll try, I think I watched G two. Or no, these were played separately, right? Or am I tweaking? Uh, Which yeah, one's I played think the first? G two rule one one was B stream and mm -hmm. Casey Cole was me. Shit, I don't, I don't even remember. Let me pull up what I have. All I remember is G2 was definitely B stream because I remember like they had a 10 minute OT and I'd even like know about it. Yeah, so it means it's got to be B stream, right? Yeah, I'm seeing what I um, yeah, I watched. Oh no, I did watch G2 rule one and then complexity as well, or was after, or I think so. I don't know. Either way, so let's jump into it. KC versus complexity, they win two to one, four one, then they lose two in a row. And then in game five, I believe Complexity at one point had a two goal lead in game five, and they ended yeah. up actually losing it. Yeah, it was, I mean, it was a kind of like classic Complexity. Like the first two games, they looked genuinely horrible. I, it was definitely like Vitality Sweep, but then they figured something out. 
then game five. Oh my God. I can't even, I feel like this team is one of the got to be up there for most leads loss of all time or just saddest yeah. losses. Cause if you're up two in game five, especially against a KC, it's like, I understand they're really good, but you got to like, you know, hunker down and you got to have, I don't know about, you got to be ready for those kind of moments. You know, what are you going to do when you have a two goal lead game five of the tournament? How are you going to want to play? Cause you got to be like on your top game. Cause you know, they're going to be attacking so fucking hard that you have to like, are we going to solo everything? Are we going to pass the ball? Like, do we want to, you know, take fifties for each other, like yeah. all that stuff. And they, when you just give up two goals, that's just bad rocket league. Like you, you got to be able to secure those moments, you know? Yeah. yeah. I feel like once you take a two goal lead in a game five, it's like, I don't, that is so, I don't know. I feel like it's so hard to come back as the other team when you're down two goals in like a game five. Cause I feel like every time I played in a game five, never like as big as moments as you read, but I mean, Flitz, I've seen you in a shitload of game fives. It just yeah. feels like, it's like a shit fest. I don't know. I feel like it's, I don't know. It's it's always a little bit chaotic, but I mean, I mean, Chicago said it himself. I mean, complexity, I can think of so many different tournaments where they're up in game five, game seven, whatever it may be on Champions Field, and they end up throwing the game. Um, literally two, like, immediately come to mind, the most obvious being that AJG uh, shot a uh, few, I think it was, like, two majors ago, or I think it's Boston. Yeah. Um, everyone remembers that one. But, I mean, I think also K-Corp is the iciest team, right? I mean, they have Rise, who's known as that. They have Atira as, like, the main character. Like, I think it's a mix of that. And honestly, like, on paper, it's like, you know, being up two, that sounds really bad throwing. But I, I almost can't say that I'm surprised because I feel like K-Corp always find a way to win and Complexity always find a way to lose in that situation. Yeah, I'm curious what the stats were against Complexity for these guys because Batira dropped a one dropped a, Yeah. Batira dropped a 1.7 against Shen G. Holy yeah, that's pretty fucking nuts. I mean, like we said earlier, guys, a one is like an average rating. So Rise had a point six in this game, but he does a lot of off ball shit that people don't realize. I feel like as a three player. Oh yeah, he's like the best in the world at like everything besides the ball, like making the game easier on his team. You know. Yeah. But I was gonna say honestly, Carmine didn't look that impressive in this series. They didn't look well. They didn't look like Carmine, but and it kind of showed in the stats. Like none of them really did anything impressive. Like I know it was a five game series, but. Uh, KC, like honestly, even in this match later is different, but in this match, they didn't even play that well, and Cole still lost. So, like, that's kind of that also sucks for Cole. Like, KC wasn't even playing their best, and they still didn't get the win. Nah, I'm with it. I'm with it. Uh, moving into the next one, we'll jump into it. G2 rule one. Remember, these teams are one and one right now. So, remember, guys, Swiss is win three or you lose three. Um, if you win three, you are top eight. So, these are big matches for these guys. Next game we have is G2. So they're trying to go to 2-1, and one, and they actually do. They win 3-0, 2-1, 1-0 in a nine-minute overtime. The game felt like it was taking forever. But I think on this in this matchup specifically, I'm sticking to my guns what I said yesterday. I think Ahmed and Khaled are not I, – I mean, I hate – I don't want to be that guy, but I just don't think they – you know what I mean? Yeah. No, I, mean, I, I agree. I yeah, said I said yesterday like they have to they have to step up right and we didn't see that today. Um, I know I know I saw a lot of people on Twitter kind of cooking Khaled as well, um, but I mean it's, I just like like I said man, Nupo needs a little bit of help. I mean even after today he still kind of stayed up there towards the top. I think he was second overall in stats. Yeah, exactly. Um, he didn't get the help that he needed, and and that's just all she wrote. Um, yeah, I mean he dropped a Khaled people. I mean I got people in my Twitch chat just straight up. I mean, I'm, all, I'm I don't say it, but I mean, I'm seeing dudes saying Khaled's too old. They're like they're in a a time period where it just doesn't. It, you know what's weird to me is when I watch Nupo and or um not Nupo but Ahmed, it's like he, I don't know. It's like is everyone just so good now where he can't create the way he used to? Because it's like it just doesn't feel like he has that same. I don't know how to describe it. it just it seems like everyone else is like up to par now and there's less creative. Yeah, he was definitely ahead of his time back then. Like, he was super fast, super mechanical. But then that just became the meta. Like, everyone had to learn it, like, every single player. So, it seemed like he, a lot of the good players, like, that are at the top, you know, keep excelling and keep learning the next thing. But he kind of never really, like, took that next step and kept learning or kept getting better. He kind of just stayed the same and everyone else caught up. Yeah, I mean, if you're, um, if you're, if you're rule one flits, do you look at another option? for players based off what you just had to land? I'm like, I'm mildly familiar with Mina and I know there are some really good players that aren't on teams. Um, so, I mean, I mean, I know a lot of young, there's a lot of young players out there too. I'm a big fan of, um, 
Dr. Known and Nush, I believe they're named. I think Nush is his teammate. I know those two people are good. I don't know if they're quite rule one caliber, but I mean, what I can say is like Mina has good talent. Like they're a good region. Um, but I also agree like with what Kago was talking about earlier. And I just think the game itself has evolved so much that yeah. it, it's it's just so it's so difficult. It's really hard to have those players, um, you know, that used to make a difference, like to really keep up and still do that. Um, so either, they either need to A, make a jump, or like maybe try some of those other top level Mina players, which I wish there was more coverage of. Um, the timing's obviously a little bit with time frames, but also with like the streams, the only really big ones being in A and EU. So it's like, I'm kind of, I'm very vaguely in there. I know there's probably someone in chat that has like a, a plethora of Mina knowledge, but I know there are players not on these two teams that are good. So they could probably find someone to fill that role. Yeah, I mean, I've heard of that Venom kid, but mm -hmm. I mean, is it worth, I mean, if you're if you are gonna replace somebody based on, I mean, are you going Ocalan? Would that be your? I mean, first I can shot? tell you, I can tell you one thing for sure. Nupo's there to stay, so it's whoever he wants, right? I mean, unless he's going to Falcons, and Falcons are looking pretty solid. I right mean, people now, are so. saying dark, bro. Is dark like that? No, I don't dude, know. Dark I mean, is I, not like. I will stand by it until he proves me wrong. That kid does not like the way he plays will not work in competitive three. Like I understand he's super brain stimmy to the average person, but watching him like wall dash and zap dash all around the field and chain dash like that's not realistic in pro play like that's not the future of rocket just spazzing out Dude, everywhere everything you just like, said just made me think of like orky like years ago <laughs> yeah i mean like he, he's really good mechanically don't get me wrong but like people think yeah. like they just see a mechanical kid and like boom he's gonna be a top star in all series. like that dude is i don't even know if like what he does in mina because i know he plays in regionals but like there is a lot of work to do with that kid. He is not close to like I don't, the top two. I don't know if you guys I don't know if you guys experienced this, but do you ever get like people come in your chat and be like, who's better, Zen or Zen or Dark? Like it's always that comparison. Yeah, like, I feel like I know. I feel like there's no question, but TikTok for for, for some reason thinks that Dark's the greatest player to ever touch the game. I mean, so, I'm telling you right now, know. bro, also fear gas is the living shit out of um Dark. Like his videos, mm -hmm. it's like Dark playing ranked with Zen. So people probably just shit their pants and are like, oh my god, he can keep up because he does it in a ranked yeah. game, you know. But like yeah. you guys know, our RLCS is completely different from, you know, the actual like playing ranked and going for pogos and shit in ones. I mean, surely though, like if he has that much mechanical skill, surely he can pick up the, the the threes aspect a little bit, right? I know we've said that about other players here in NA and stuff, but I mean, with how like some of the clips I've seen him hit are absolutely ridiculous. So like, surely if someone takes some time with him, then maybe. But uh, I don't know. Like I said, with until like Kago said, until. He really proves that i don't think he can have that combo of like oh he's him he's the answer like honestly with all due respect i haven't even seen him play a threes game like i, I haven't i've only seen his ones in, like, i mean i'm with you i just it. when i see him i think of pogos yeah uh, but let's get into the next one we had vitality taking on og um vitality come out they win 5-1 3-2 and then they win 1-0 so they get a sweep and overall my my instant thoughts is dude i don't know what that did not look like the OG that was constantly improving from shitting the bed in the first regional, getting like 16th to then what, a top four? Then would they make another top four or top eight? Two top fours or something? That did not yeah, look yeah. like the same team that was like going on an upward trend. It just looked like it just didn't feel the same team to me. It just like Noli, I felt like Noli, I don't want to like poke the bear too much, but Noli from today, I don't think he had a pretty, I don't think he had a good major in my opinion. Um, I think he definitely thinks he could have played better. I'm sure he thinks that. And Calm and Jane Apps, I thought, were quiet. I don't feel like any of them were creating to like give them even a chance in the series to win. Yeah, I, I, I would say, like, um, I think, I don't know if we touched, I mean, I think we touched on it yesterday, but OG is very much a team that is system-based, like where all three players feed off of each other. And I by saying this, I don't think Jane Apps and Calm were 2 v 3 in but Noli had a, like a, for his standards, like a pretty rough weekend. Like, I mean, I think we'll see it later, but in the first day he had that backflip in the game one where they were playing really well. Yeah, against the Falcons. Momentum. He had that own goal. He had like obviously some whiffs, but like it's really hard if you play a system and three-man based game, if someone's not really like performing how they should be to for everyone to get going. Like everyone needs each other to get going. Um, and... I think OG, obviously as a team, didn't you know do the things they were doing online, but it also comes from it stems from individually. And if you're individually not playing well, you can't even expect to play well as a team. Uh, there was just no individual like talent yeah. from OG this weekend. Yeah, let's what are you thinking on that? 
Yeah, I think Kyle got most of it, and I love Nolly. Um, that's my boy. Um, yeah. But, I mean, like you said, I think he just had, like, a kind of a quiet major. Um, it sucks, and I know he's going to be thinking about that. Um, but it happens. I mean, I think the beauty of it is obviously, you know, you got an exploit coming up. You got time to work on whatever mistakes we need to work on. Um, but, I mean, OG, I think OG are better than what they showed, right? Like, I, I don't think this, I mean, you even said to yourself, this wasn't the OG that we saw in NA. This wasn't, this wasn't what we normally see from them. Um, I do think JNFs have an okay series against Vitality, but it really just didn't matter. Uh, they got walked. It's, it's really the truth. So maybe we'll see them again, um, but definitely wasn't wasn't the best uh, major from them. If you're one of these teams that go to this LAN and it just like, you have a showing like OG, right? Do you already, do you consider a change based off what you saw? Or do you just like say, fuck it? Cause there's not much time, is there? For yeah, I mean, now? I've thought about this. I've thought about this a lot, right? Because you only have one major. Or one one like window, sorry, one window to, to make that like decision, right? If they if OG or any team for that matter doesn't decide to make a move, um, they just have to wait till next season. Um, and you know, a lot of I know a lot of people. Some people feel strongly about moves. Some people don't. It's it's very tough. I think the most important decision with making a move is not only who you kick but who you pick up. Um, I think there could be a situation like let's say in theory they kick like Com or something. If they don't have a really good person to fill that role, like. I think yeah. things just get really awkward. Like, I think you must have to have your eyes set on someone that you're going to get. And I don't think there's any really big free agent. Um, and I don't know. I mean, you know, I don't want to talk about, like, any rumors. But, I mean, we've all seen shift in what some of these other teams are doing. So, maybe I don't know. We'll see. One door closes, another opens. Reed, are you confident yeah. that you get – you have a better weekend with SSG than OG? Oh, okay. okay. You like that? Uh, setting me up, Ali. <laughs> Yeah. Um, straight to Reddit. Uh, yeah, exactly. I mean, I honestly, I would have like, I always didn't want to be a cocky person because I just think they're no, douchey it. and it comes off well or it doesn't come off well. But I mean, there's uh, nothing wrong with confidence, I, though. Yeah, yeah. I personally think that we do better than um, OG for sure. I honestly thought LG was going to be the team that would get knocked out first, but they played well enough to get to round five. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm fully confident that if we go to that land, we do better, but there's no really, there's only say because we didn't make it. Um, but obviously next split, that's the goal. You know, we make the major and then we prove that we kind of are the best, the third best team in the region, you know? Yeah. So um, sp speaking of, Real quick, I while we're on the thought, of it, I'm kind of jumping the gun a little bit. I can come back to this actually, but yeah, let's go That's to the next one. It. I was thinking about yeah, yeah. Uh, a cheese tweet, um, but we're yeah. okay. Let's go on to the next one. <laughs> no, I, I get you. Um, BDS power. I mean, I don't really think there's too much to say. I yeah. power just got. I just don't. It's. I mean, look at the fucking score line. We got one zero, a good OT, four one, and then eight to one. When powers play someone like not near their level or like someone near their level, they just get owned. It's like they they struggle with that next tier. It's that's kind of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll make it quick. Exotic, Exotic alone scored seven goals. <laughs> um, Power scored two. This was a beat down. You know, it's just it's just what it is. Yeah, I mean, BDS. You were saying yesterday your player to watch was what Drawley. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't. Uh, I think he did pretty solid today. Um, yeah. I want to see. How, do we have the stats on this specific series? Yeah, I can pull it up real quick. Yeah, I mean, he had, he had a one. I mean, okay, I'm not gonna lie. He had a one point two when he was the worst on his team for this series. So I don't know if this was a great one to look at, but I mean, <laughs> so I do all, think he's a so difference they're all maker. Playing, they're all playing decent. I do think Drawley's a good. difference maker, but I don't think it mattered against Power. Respectfully, I mean, they they ha they did very well, and we'll talk about it in this next round, obviously. But yeah. you know. All right, moving on to our next series. We had Mates taking on Falcons. Falcons had a huge day before where they beat KC Carmen Corp, who was the favorite to win the major, and to most people still. They win, uh, they beat them yesterday, and now they have a lot of momentum. They're 2 0, but they're playing a fear, or um, my bad, they're playing a Mates team that is honestly kind of like shock. I didn't expect them to be this good. I didn't even, I thought they could potentially even miss out on top eight. And now I look like a fucking idiot because, well, they're the one seed. I mean, I, I can mean, tell you right now, I don't think anyone had mates go in one seed, right? Like, I honestly thought if Falcons were able to beat K-Corp, who's relatively been dog-walking the entirety of EU, I thought that Falcons would roll mates. I was completely wrong. I was shocked with how this turned out. But, I mean, I have to give some respect to mates, right? I didn't have faith in them yesterday. I didn't have faith in them today, but they proved me wrong, so. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, mates, I mean, I don't think anyone would call you out for not having mates like one C. That is just well played by them. Uh, I don't know, bro. It's weird because every time they keep winning and every time I want to bet against them, like for the quarters tomorrow, I, I think I'm going to bet against them. We'll see. But like they just keep proving wrong. And I don't know. They just they're obviously they're kind of that team where I feel like this is the difference where I don't know if I would say they have a superstar. You could say that. But like when you have OG, LG, no superstar team structure, and then you have an EU version of that I'd compare it to gentle mates. It yeah. just shows they're like even their non superstar teams are just on another level and just play so they just play so well together in sync, good coaching, obviously, and they just know how to you know enable each other. And obviously, there's no other way to do that, and they're proving it. Like three zero is impressive. That's not that's not easy at the most stacked land maybe of all time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean that's a that's a good question. I wonder if this is the most stacked land of all time. But I think the big thing to me that sticks out is if you saw the stats. TRK had a point three in the series. Like, are you gonna win a series like that with a teammate having a point three? Like, is that even possible? I mean, I think uh, I was about to say I was about to say G two with Daniel, but they lost. They lost to Genji. So I mean, they're literally, it's pretty much like you're damn near invisible. Like, I remember yeah. like series like when I was playing in, uh, with X set. Like, I would sometimes go look at my stats, and if I had below like a point six, I felt like I remember in those series thinking like, dude, I feel like I'm just damn near driving around. You know. No, so. I feel you. Losing losing three zero is a huge statement for mates, and they actually ended up taking the one seed where they beat Rule One three one BDS and th- and then they had beat Falcons three zero. So their resume is probably the best resume of anybody. No, I mean is it though? Uh, I think Rule One Rule One Rule One. I mean Rule One takes yeah. it. I mean, low key G two their wins like aren't very impressive. To be honest, like, oh yeah, I didn't even, bro. I've, I just like they didn't beat that. a single team. They kind of got the god Swiss. Looking back on it, they didn't get a team that made top eight. As Holy any other shit, wins. bro, you're right. I didn't, yeah, I, I never realized they beat OCE one, OCE two, and then Mina two. And I mean, the others I mean, rule one did not. Look and great. rule one more looked yeah. like, yeah. Falcons run is impressive. I mean, there's a lot of impressive runs. OG Falcons, KC. I mean, I guess OG, not great, OG but... had a rough one, but I mean, Vitality, Three top eight. Powerhouses. I mean, yeah, they beat two of the four. I mean, you got a one yeah. and three team or whatever it is. That's pretty damn impressive. Um, so yeah, I think Mates had a good one. And then Genji taking on Furia. Now, I think, Reed, you said 3-1 Genji yesterday. I think I had game five Genji and Flitz, what'd you have? I think I had game five Genji as well. So I guess I'd lost, couldn't keep we all up. knew this would be a coin flip. Um, but holy shit, dude, did Lost play good. I mean, they went in game five, but as we looked again yesterday, um, yesterday, guys, for those that don't know, the dude was at the top of the charts, and then today again, he is at the top of the charts of the average um, again. Yeah, I mean, looking at this series, I mean, obviously Lost uh, and Yen played well, and I think game five itself is a little bit of a blowout, but they both had a two rating in game five. That's nuts. And the most important game of the series Yan and Lost together drop a 2.04 and a 2.15. Like, that's wow. Yeah. Um, I, I I seriously was so convinced that neither Lost or just Fury in general. I thought they were going to slow down. Um, and this makes me very interesting to see what they're going to do against Vitality tomorrow because I, I think they already beat them earlier in the tournament, right? Round two. Um, I very much want to see how that goes. Um, I'm very interested, and that's probably going to be. I think it's my favorite. Like, like that's the one I want to watch the most tomorrow. Like, I'm very curious to see what happens. Yeah, that's it's gonna be a good one. Reed, what do you think on um Jinji? Um, like, are you do you like how they're playing and stuff? Like, do you think they could go far? Yeah, I think they could go far. I mean, Gen G, I don't know. Uh, kind of just, I don't even think Gen G could be mad that mad. Like, you're playing every tournament. There's like the hot team in the tournament or two, and Fear Gentlemen are just them. Yeah. So, I mean, they took it to five. And now they know what to expect. Uh, obviously, now they have like you know, video game tape on them in case they ever need to review it. But I don't know. I can't really be mad. I still think Genji played pretty well. I would be confident in them, like to make a top four and go further. Uh, it's not like this loss kind of killed that. Uh, but you just gotta give your tip your hat to Furia. They just played well when it mattered most. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Genji, I remember they 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 scored an instant kickoff goal and then they gave up like four in a row or something. And I think in my notes I wrote Genji looked decent at times. They had a couple of good passing plays and stuff, but I mean Furia just looked better as a whole. Yan looks like a dog. Um, I mean, Lost is playing the best he's probably ever played, and then Jafino is way better than I expected. 
Um, I mean, so yeah. Yeah, there's like I would say the main thing I can notice between the top teams right now in the tournament that you know other teams that made the top eight is it feels like the top teams like Gentlemates and even KC during like towards the end there and obviously Furia like they're not having any lapses where Gen G G two you're having like lapses of like a random whiff ball a bad touch where it's like they're so good enough but I don't know if their tournament quality winning good enough because we're seeing these lapses and when you have those it's gonna be really hard to beat a team. Like Fury or like someone that's just on that on that day is just not messing up, so they kind of need to clean that up for any chance. Do you think Fury? Let's say let's say they do keep it up. Do you guys think that they go on to win it all realistically if they're playing at this level? Honestly, I think it's definitely possible. I mean, they've already beaten like some pretty solid teams. I mean, they beat Vitality, they beat Genji, and I mean Chicago said it himself. Like it's not like Genji were playing bad. Like it was a close. No, they are. I think Genji's playing solid for sure. Mm -hmm. Like good. I, I mean, I think I think even for. Their, rounds four and five like genji like I, I thought they just overall had a relatively good day like yeah obviously they went to round five but i don't think they played bad by any means but i mean if you're able to keep this up man i don't see why they couldn't right they've already beaten vitality earlier in the tournament um winner of bds g2 i mean i think bds will be a tough one but if they can be vitality i don't see why they couldn't be bds yeah as well. you're not I mean, it really just comes down to how they play in the finals but i could definitely see it um they've impressed me they impressed me day one I said they wouldn't keep it up day two. I'm not going to make that same mistake. I think they keep it up. I think we'll at least see them in the semis. Yeah, but also we got to take this into factor. A crowd is coming in. So do, I mean, are you confident more that Gen G um, plays better with the crowd or Furia? Because I think Furia is like way more likely to ignite and go far through this tournament with the way Yan is. I mean, we know how Yan fucking yeah. gets. Yeah, oh, man. Furia's a crowd. Like everyone loves Furia. Like Furia will be. Actually, I don't know because it's EU, but I like Fury is usually one of the fan favorites, and I wouldn't be surprised if they are again. Why is and that? Like, why did they become such a damn favorite? People love the, I think people love their energy. I think people love their fucking aura. And Brazil. Like, and Brazil. Yeah, it's just like, especially when you got like this guy like Yan hitting some yeah. crazy that people haven't seen before, doing it so consistently. It's like, bro, this guy's insane. Like, let me root for this guy. Yeah, and I know I know predictions will come later, but I mean I do want to say like if we're talking about crowd, I mean we can't ignore Zen. I mean that guy like kind of owns every crowd, you know. So yeah, we will. Yeah, um, Zen on crowd. That's gonna be insane. Dude. No, I'll really be lit. Insane. We're gonna get into predictions later, guys. Um, but let's keep it rolling. We are going into our lower round four matchups. Remember, guys, there were a lot of matches today. What I think seventeen matches. So we're gonna try to get through this quicker if we can. Um, LG taking on OG now. LG bounce back. They get a dub over Limitless, 3-0. They come and play OG, who OG's also only win was against Limitless. Again, 3-0. So going into this match, if you want the truth, I had OG winning this. And LG comes out, and they win. Um, they lose the first, and they win the next three. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to be real. Uh, I didn't think, like, this series was definitely a toss-up. I would probably lean towards OG at the start. Yeah, but I think like the elephant in the room, OG wins game two. They're looking not terrible in game, in game two, and then that like I always talk about momentum shifting series. Nolly had an own goal and a half, which is unfortunate. I mean, he buried it in the back of his fucking net. Happens. I mean, well, it's right. It happens, but yeah. that that was the absolute momentum swinger. Look at like LG's like holy fuck, we finally scored, we cracked it, and like that just unlocked him for the rest of the series. And why it's kind of one of those why, things. Why pass that back? While you're I don't know. I, I think sometimes, like, there's always moments where Noli, I know, loves to pass. He loves to, you know, find catch the other team sleeping. But sometimes there's just ones that are just not worth it. And I think that one, he was kind of like, I want to get the ball to my teammate. But at the same time, it was like, no, this isn't the right play. And just, you know, shit happens. But it, it really sucks because I do think this was, this changed the literally the series from OG winning to LG winning. Because after this, I mean, it's just clear, like, the momentum shift is insane. I mean, while we're talking about it, like, dumb mistakes, um, I think they get another goal. Was it in this game? Um, yeah, it's right here, right here. Just a, a whiff comes out, and it sucks to see, but do you think he's just in his own damn head? Because he's obviously way better than that. I mean, it's yeah, I mean, you can thing. you can see it from his facial expressions on both the pass back. I mean, even right here, if you want to, like, go that go back a little bit in the clip like he just you know he's very frustrated i mean i don't blame him uh this isn't how nolly normally plays no a good player um this isn't something that he normally does um and especially being the second like i hate to say big mistake but the second big mistake of this series um i remember as well as after the series was over you could see that nolly just kind of sitting there just frustrated like kind of taking it all in 
um, it, it's a lot. Um, you know, moments like this, it builds up, and especially if they happen more than once, like you can't not. It's you can't let it get in your head, but it always does. You know, it's very hard to ignore that. Um, so I think, yeah. I think like Chicago said, I think after that own goal, that really was a big turning point. I mean, especially because like it wasn't the own goal was so avoidable. That was the worst part. Um, whether he chooses not to pass it back or if Combs is a little bit farther back and he expects to pass, like it was a very avoidable play. Um, and then you see something similar happen here. So it's just unfortunate. So I got a little thing to add. Um, is Reddles right here? Scre right here. He's screaming through the wall. You see him? Yeah. He's saying something. He's, yeah. Is he chirping at him? Yeah, definitely. Because oh, you... They're like side to side, right? So, well, because yeah, Com in this sure. game, Com was getting in this series. Com was getting amped up. I think in game one, he was like yeah. screaming to the right, and then Reddle started chirping right when the momentum started shifting, and he knew it. I like that. It's the two NA shit talkers going at it. It really is. Mono like, mono. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then but, it sucks that Com's just gotta eat it. Com's pretty good about that, you know, dishing it, but also taking it. You just gotta be able to. And uh, yeah, I mean, Reddles can talk his shit. You know, it's an NA match. Talk your shit like this is that that one's personal so cheese tweets out this um basically saying we are the third best team in na stop with the recency bias now when i saw this tweet uh what i mean my initial thoughts on it was i didn't even think <laughs> i'm gonna be honest i don't know cheese if you're in here or not but um i felt I'll like that series okay good. okay okay i'll take the i'll, I'll play straight. Yeah, yeah yeah fuck it fuck it right chat uh welcome to the quick chat <laughs> <laughs> but i realistically don't know why he tweeted this because i felt like it was more og being hot ass in that series than it was lg being good is that fucked up to say no i i actually agree because like i i don't think lg lg won they got the job done right that's all that matters like to them like that's all that matters yeah but, i agree they did not, I did not come out of the series like, yo, LG looks good. I was like, if anything, I was like, yo, that LG was a sloppy had series a rough or something. Tournament. They yeah. had a rough tournament. I, I never thought LG, but I will say LG, maybe he knew they were good because they did look good in the final series. But exactly. That, yeah. that series was not, that series was not, holy fuck, LG, let's, we're getting this shit going. It was kind of like OG. Like, oh, wait, wait, we got Cheese. Cheese says there was a lot of shit said in the OG series. There's a lot of behind the scenes tweet was emotional on me. I mean, dude, it's there's nothing wrong with that. Dude. I like the, I like the tweet. Yeah, honestly. Yeah, it's good. Talk like talk your shit like uh, and I, like I said, like you, you should feel that way. Like we beat them, you know, like we're the third best NA. But uh, yeah, I just I, I think if like, like everybody watched the series back, it'd be like, mm, well, that gameplay was not like insane. I think like I okay the way I guess I read it as was like like we like you guys can't compete with us does that make sense but I know what che Cheese's side is coming from like like he knows how good they are and shit and they wanted to beat them it meant a lot more than just that so I get it you know there's more to it um but yeah I don't think there's not much too much more to say on that but yeah LG win that game they win that series three to one OG go home and yeah i mean overall i wasn't too happy um i was hoping more out of og i thought they could make top eight same with lg i thought they'd both be on that qual series but i mean other than that not too much to say um complexity taken on kcp complexity i mean 404040 i didn't watch this series but is that true a perfect sweep is that actually was that the first that's the first perfect sweep now i think so let me see the stats i gotta see that I don't know. I mean, is this one of those I mean, series where like you go into it knowing what to expect? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's just one way. I mean, we talked about it uh, before. I mean, we talked about it last last quick <laughs> chat. I mean, that 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 OCE too. You know, we're always we're always watched them. And I mean, Cole's a really good team. Um, I I like Pioneers. I don't think they're bad, but I don't think they're in the same classes as Complexity. I mean, did I expect a perfect sweep? No. Did I expect a sweep? Yeah. I mean, so bro, I look at the that. stats. 0. 0.2, 0. 0.3, 0. 0.5. Now, you're cheese. You're chilling, bro. You Don't worry, man. It was just bringing up because it was on the topic. Um, but yeah, they drop. None of them drop over a one. And on the other side, CRR, Dorito, and then they're just having fun, right? They're dropping all 1.2s and above. 1.8. Yeah, I mean, that's just, like, that's insane. Um, yeah. And then the next series we had was Power and Rule 1. And Power actually win this in Game 5. And I think they win 2-0, they lose, they're going back and forth every game. But I think this, again, it just goes to the same thing where it's like, 
I okay, I would have never had rule one losing um this series going into the major. Yeah, me neither. Mm-hmm. Or yeah. I think there's two ways to look at the series, right? Because I think first you have to give power the credit. Um, a lot of people shit on that OCE region, right? I mean, a lot of people think they're weak. I mean, we were we were even talking about it yesterday, right? We were completely just in OC two. Yes, this is OC one, but overall, I think they're kind of considered the second worst region. Um, this is a good win over Mina, um, but what I will say as well is I think Rowan kind of need to wake up. And we talked about them making a roster move earlier. I feel like if you're rule one, you don't have an excuse for losing this. Um, this is a series you want to win. This is a series you need to win. So. You have to ask yourself, why do we lose this? And if we look at the stats, I mean, obviously stats don't tell the whole story, but I'm not dropping a point four. Um, that's not great. You yeah. can't have that happening. And that's not in game five. That's the whole series. He did not play good this entire series, which is what we hate to see, but you kind of have to ask yourself moving forward, right? Like, what? where do we go from here? Because I really think this series alone is kind of where it opens up. Like, okay, we have one trade window to make a move. Are we going to make a move? And if, if what, for who? Because like I said, Big props to power. That's a good win. I feel like you can't afford to lose a series if you're rule one. No, completely agree. I mean, dropping a point four in a series, you know, I don't want to beat a dead horse, but yeah, it's the same thing for me. I think this is one of those series where it's like an eye opener. And, but also, like you said, I want to give credit to power because I do think power is starting to become like every major. It's like, they're more legit. You know, it's like, you're like, oh shit, this team is not a free win to, you know, it's, we got to play fucking good to beat them because they are becoming good. All these guys are banana heads legit as hell. Yeah, no, I completely agree. I mean, I, I'm just, they're slowly and surely like continuing to improve. Um, I want to see them make a jump and finally take over. Um, you know, I mean, uh, who, who beat BDS? Was it pioneers that one time? I think Banana Head was on that one roster. Yeah, but it was, it was to see them like really, really make a run. I mean, this isn't bad at all. I mean, ninth through 11th, that's a good result. If, can you guys still hear me? <laughs> if you guys can still hear me right now, my PC just went black. Welcome to the quick chat. Um, sorry, fellas. Welcome in. Welcome in. Hey, if you guys want to take it over, Reed, go ahead. I'm gonna play. Uh, I'm gonna play some applauding. Just do your thing. I'm gonna meet no. <laughs> I think it's coming back on. We are back. Welcome in to the quick chat. Uh, Flitz, can we get a quick chat from you or no? Oh, am I not in Discord anymore? My Discord's cut. Motherfucker. Chat, this is going fucking terrible. Uh, welcome in, everybody. Welcome into the quick chat. Let me join up again. Let me join up again. Welcome yeah, to... Back. Give it up for it. <laughs> what a I'll save. What a save. Uh, welcome back to... The quick chat. The quick chat. Um, <laughs> Flitz, can we get one or no? Um, what's up? <laughs> All right, man's not catching the vibe. Welcome to Bang. the quick chat. Uh, but yeah, we are. Let's jump into the next game. Sorry, folks. Um, technical difficulties. If you guys want to help us buy a new PC, um, be appreciated. Ooh, okay. But uh, yeah, let's go into the high round matches where you are trying to qualify. Both these teams right now are two and one, and they're on their qual match. Jumping into it, we got. Falcons taking on Vitality, and we got Falcons winning this three to one. Yeah, I Falcons look good, bro. I think this is the perfect um, medium of Falcons look good, and Vitality haven't really been impressive yet. Like they, you know, the, everyone was kind of saying they're shaky. Like it's kind of been the Zen show, like Radisson Alpha not doing like a whole lot. Um, but this is because we have high expectations of them from their last season and what we know we can do. So it comes from like a good place, but there's, you know, not really too much action going on vitality. Like it feels like they're, scor- they're not scoring a lot, um, a lot of mistakes, but you know, also Falcons are playing good. So they capitalize, but the series wasn't great because you need two teams playing some really good rocket league to have a better series. And that's not what happened. Yeah. yeah see this surprising to me is that falcons went and get swept by mates and then beat a team that i think we can all agree i i don't know if we can all agree because recently i think mates have looked better but overall i think vitality i think vitality is better than mates at least i did think that heading into this major um and falcons they kind of yeah they dropped a game but i feel like they kind of this series i think falcons were the better team i think they deserve this win and i i don't know it's just 
it's weird to see because I, I really thought that they would have just already been out of the Swiss by now. Um, and then they head into this series and they kind of do what they need to do against Vitality. Um, and, you know, obviously stats don't tell the whole story, but I don't even think TRK, when, I think TRK is one of, the, if not the best players. And we already talked about it yesterday, but I can't even say that they have a best player, but I'm a big TRK fan and he didn't go crazy. Uh, Where Watson clears did really well. Um, and, you know, just overall, I just, I think this should be happening. And I'm just surprised that they lost to mates just to Vitality, anyways. Yeah, my so I think the thing is for me is that Vitality are finally getting matched up with a team that can you could say outplaces them in skill. Would you guys agree with that or not? Yeah. Like yeah, overall, I'm talking top to bottom team. Like I think TRK yeah, I could agree. Yeah. Yeah, I'd agree with what you're saying. Um and I think it kind of goes to show that like you're saying TRK is like an insane player, but he's dropping a point eight and you got two teammates dropping a fucking one point three. You know, and that, they're the twins. Also, mm-hmm. can we talk about their back posture? Has anyone ever like? Is that not insane? Those guys <laughs> literally, literally you will not be to the back. It just years, it dude. looks so uncomfortable. Uh, but also going back to it, and then on side of vitality, I think Zen has actually been playing good the whole whole Thursday Friday day one and two. Mm-hmm. I think Alpha's been, but also I think his teammates are playing solid, but they're just not. Then again, there's a couple whiffs out of Radisson. Redosin, um, however you want to say it, but I don't think his teammates are also playing anything insane. Nah, you guys could say I'm glazing, but I thought Zen, I think Zen's been playing good. I think his, I think unless his teammates are like playing at up to another level, they're not gonna, they're gonna struggle against teams like this. You know, no, you're right. I mean, Zen, Zen is still that guy. I mean, we saw it especially. I mean, obviously we'll get into it later, but especially against Luminosity, I felt like he was really keeping him in that series. I think Rado overall, I've been kind of disappointed with Rado. I feel like he's had a lot of opportunities, like shot shot opportunities that he would either put high or wide. Um, and I feel like a lot of the success of Vitality has to do with how well Zen's playing. And overall, I think he's been doing a good job. Yeah, do you, okay, I got a question. If you are Vitality, you made top eight, they, they end up getting in, but a little spoiler, but if they, end, if you lose top eight, um, actually, you know, I'm gonna throw a little back. Let's say they lose to in their round five series and don't make, top eight do you consider a change like yes. or do you think they're already thinking about it i think if yeah. you're vitality and go from winning worlds to going two three in swiss you have to make some sort of move i think that's so like just they're expecting... wasting zen's career yeah. Pretty much. yeah but who who could they get see that's like, always you have to think about og like when we talked about the roster move like there's not always someone better but it's vitality you know they're obviously trying to win they can maybe buy somebody else but like who realistically realistically do we think is available that also, it's very tough somewhere. with europe too because regions you know, yeah you like, got you the know, french, french exactly 100 percent. because people are saying joyo but guys you got to remember joyo's like these yeah. guys are french completely so they automatically like is like eh. um and yeah but also someone said something fairy peak now i don't know what your is fairy peak making them lose these series or is it is it the players because to me i don't think fairy peaks doing anything probably bad and hurting them you know, no, it might not be no. Farah who's bringing up fucking 30 notes over one thing, but I mean, he's not the reason it's... they're losing. Yeah, I, mean, I don't I don't think it's fair to put the blame on Fairy. Like, whether they were winning when Farah was there or not, like, the trio of Alpha, Rado, and Zen were the, one of, if not the greatest teams of all time. Like, that stretch they had of just winning everything, like, that is undeniable. I don't believe that Farah is the only reason for their success. And yes, he goes to KC and KC starts doing well. But if you're telling me that the only way that Vitality can have that many wins is with Farah, then I just don't believe you. Yeah, 100%. Um, all right, let's jump into the next one. We have G2 BDS. Now, this was played on the B stream. So I didn't really get to watch this um, because Jin G and KC was playing at the same time. So we can kind of go through this quicker if you guys want. But it looks like BDS gets the best of them. And I can pull up the stats, but they win three to one. Is that more so due to, would you say BDS playing good or is G2 just not on their game, like fully? No, it was just classic G2, to be honest. Like, uh, BD- G2 is like my, the vitality of this land, except we don't really know about their land experience. So that's why it's more of a question mark. But G2 has not played at all this land, like what the G2 we know they can be. And I feel yeah. like as, a, as someone who's played them, and like, I mean, all of us know, just played him in ranked. Like, we can just tell, uh, like, G2 still good. Like, they're still a very good team, but they haven't hit that level that I mean, us at least NA fans are waiting for. Like, BDS is just gonna capitalize off your mistakes if unless you're like, BDS is just gonna m- wait for you to make mistakes and then score 
And that's what G2 was doing. They were getting slammed on dunks, you know, just random, like, just, you know, not great plays. And BDS is like, yeah, Monkey Moon's the king of capitalizing and just being efficient. But I, G2, it, I don't know, BDS didn't impress me. It's more like G2, like, we got to hit this stride. Like, we're running out of time. So I was I was a little bit worried about them. I'm not gonna lie, because they have just they haven't been looking what like even 75 percent of what we know they can look like. So that's why I was a little bit yeah. concerned. Um, Flitz, I Reed was saying yesterday talking about how he thinks Atomic is like a key part of this team. I mean, he dropped a point four. Is that like? Do you think he's a? Is he kind of underwhelming this this land? Or what do you think? Or do you think it's all of them? It's it's tough. I mean, I you can definitely see it in this series. Um, yeah. But I, I I think all three of those players on G two are like some of the best individual players that NA has to offer. Yeah. And I think once they really figure out what they need to do, they can be one of, if not the best team in the world. Like the actual potential that those players have, and obviously everyone's been saying it, but like it's real. Like playing them, there are sometimes I'll play Daniel or something, and I'm just like, I don't know what to do, man. I mean, this kid is just yeah, he's just he's fucking just better. He just knows. So he's I mean, ahead. it's tough to see this. I mean, obviously, like don't. I'm not biased here, but I want to see G2 win this. Um, but I mean, you got to give it to BDS. My man to watch Drawley didn't have a crazy series, but I got to admit, Exotic's been looking pretty good these past few days. Yeah, he's kind uh, of but a they sleeper. definitely deserve to be in that top eight. Yeah, I mean, I think I think they're I think they're good. I think we knew they were all going to make top eight as well. Um, BDS jumping into our next series, we have a qual match. KC taking on um, Genji, and they do win it. And Rise right here. Um, if we've listened real quick, is what was he? He's chirping a little bit. Oh wait, that's the, that's <laughs> not even the same fucking <laughs> series. But you see what kind of vibe this motherfucker has. Uh, this isn't the same series, guys. Chill. Uh, welcome to the quick chat. Uh, <laughs> but anytime things go bad, just have that. Yeah, yeah. That's but. A- I don't know. I mean, Rise, what, what's your guys' thoughts on this team uh, so far? Uh, like, are they hitting I'll, expectations I'll and everything? Yeah. yeah, I don't... I mean, 3 one's still pretty impressive. I mean, Rise, you can tell they're getting into it. I genuinely think that that last series Casey had, where they went 3-1, um, that was kind of the... Like, that Gen G series, they looked really good. I think that... Like, if I was a team playing them, I would not be too happy because it feels like they found something and they're just running with it. Like they looked like the, the Casey from online, the off ball, the pressure, the speed, you know, you're, you're, you're never, you're never like allowed to like blink. And that I really did look like for the first time that they, they were like, Oh shit, like we're back. So I, I I have high expectations for them for the rest of the tournament. Yeah. I'm kind of with Kaga. And what sucks too is I felt like Genji didn't even play that bad. Like they got rolled in that game too. But game three was a close overtime. Uh, but once K- once Casey kind of got that overtime, it felt like they kind of just started to pull away with that. Um, but I mean, Casey, I mean they're the real deal. We we all know this. Um, I'm super excited for tomorrow's games. I mean, I know we talked about it earlier, but I do think we have the eight best teams here um, in that top eight, which is what we want. Um, and Casey's definitely one of the teams that I'm going to be looking out for. Yeah, I'm with it. I when I was watching the series, I don't like you were saying. I don't even think Gen G played bad. I think KC was just playing damn near perfect, like on as they were online. So, I mean, you can tip it to KC. They're good, and they're probably to most people after that series. That was like a statement series. We're like, shit, this is not the same team that they saw against Falcons. Um, like this looks like they hit another gear. Um, but moving into our final round five matchups, um, we had guys. Now these teams are two and two. You win this, you move on, you lose, you're out. So this is a huge, huge, we'll start at the top with Genji. Genji, um, qualify winning three to one over complexity. They win in overtime to start the day, um, to start the first match. Then they win four, two, they lose two zero, and then they bounce back winning three, zero, and I mean, I, I was hyped to see Genji make it because I at least wanted two teams in. I'm glad Genji showed up in the series because Complexity is a good ass team. Yeah, I was a little worried. I'm not gonna lie. That's a tough round five. Yeah, heading into this, like Complexity have shown like really good flashes of like what they can bring to the table. Um, so I was worried at first that I think that first game is you know I've talked about this before. I think that first game is very important. Yeah. So when I saw Genji win it, I was a little feeling a little bit more confident. But I, I think I think Chronic really stepped up the series. Um, I, I think he, I think he did a good job of just making stuff happen and like really securing that Genji get this win. Um, but overall, like you said, I'm happy to see Genji here. I mean, I think they're the second best team in has to offer, and I hope they can make a run in the playoffs. 
Yeah, I think uh, Dorito, Dorito, Rays Bowl, and CRR. It's like that team, it sounds like that's just a scary team. Like you were saying, Reed, to play in these matchups. Like you see these matchups and these opportunities, these teams, like Power, Power is probably the team you're wanting to play first. And then yeah. um, LG, then Complexity based off how the weekend's been going. And seeing Complexity, I kind of did get scared for um, Genji. I was like, shit, you never know. Because we saw Rays Bowl, like we were saying, we had that sidewall redirect. He's good as shit. Like when he's on, he's on his game. So good dub by Genji to win 3-1. to one, And then they end up making the playoffs. Moving on to our next series, we have Power versus G2. I mean, and this is just a fucking beat down, fellas. Yeah, we don't got to talk about this much. Maybe G2 found their form. That's what we kind of hope, right? Yeah, I mean, I think G2 winning 3-0. They're not giving up a game, and they're just showing there's levels to it. But again, at the end of the day, like you said earlier, their schedule, strength of schedule to get into the top eight was the weakest, like in my opinion. Like like we said, KC, then they beat Rule 1, another team who didn't make top eight, then another three. So all the series they won were 3-0. The series they lost were two teams that made top eight. So that's a little concerning. Yeah, so that's kind of a little one, but let's move on to our series. In my opinion, series of the day easily. Um, Flitz, what'd you uh, were you watching this whole series? What'd you think about this one? Oh man, I I mean I completely agree with you. This, this was series of the day, man. I mean, just seeing I thought it was over, right? I thought after I thought after Vitality won that game through OT, I was like, man, dude, Lumen had a good run. But they bounced back game four, man. A lot of a lot of the teams this tournament, when they lose that game three overtime in a one-one series like that. That team that wins the overtime it was always just three ones, right? But seeing Lumen come back and really put up a fight, that was that was so fun to watch, man. And then that game five as well, it was super close. I think they scored off a bump um, with like a minute left. And then after that, they really just kind of got desperate. But yeah. it was a really good series. This was so fun to watch. I'm hoping we can get more series like this tomorrow. Um, this was a great, great match. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'll give my quick thoughts on this one. I think... LG looked flat, and at the beginning, I believe they got smacked game one. Yeah, game one, they lose 4-0, and I was like, oh, shit, not like this. And then they ended up bouncing back. They started getting a shitload of demos, and then it looked like they kind of started playing their game. Rettles had a shitload of demos, Magic Bear. Cheese started playing more confident, um, which was good to see. And then you had them going back and forth, and then in game five, it just like it just felt like it slowly started slipping away. Um, and yeah, man. Yeah, I'd agree. But I mean, are you uh, overall? If you're LG, what's your what's your thoughts on the like a weekend like that? I guess because as we see, um, Reddles, you know, you know, it's it's interesting because I think they definitely need to consider how those first two rounds went, losing to the two uh, Sam teams, and they're very good teams. Don't get me wrong, but I know they were confident heading into this weekend. Um, we already talked about it, but that limitless win that's to be expected. That's what they needed, and beating OG is a good win for them because I feel like. You know, those past two matchups that they had against them in regionals two and three, OG kind of had their numbers. So that's a good win for them. Um, and, you know, putting up a game five, or not game five, but game five series against Vitality, that's good. But I think overall, um, I don't think they should be looking to make a move or anything, and I don't think they will. But I do think they just need to just try and aim to make that next major. And just, I think they need to have a better start. I think going down 0 2 is really, really tough for them. Um, and it's going to be tough for anyone to come back there. But you never want to be in a position where you're coming from the bottom end of Swiss playing Vitality to make it. You never want that. Yeah. I know mid-series they were taught, like, Reddles kept looking over at Cheese and stuff. And, like, I don't know what he was trying to say to him, but he kept looking over to him, like, saying a couple words and stuff in between goals and stuff. Um, I mean, do you think, I mean, I mean, I know if I was Cheese, bro, I'd probably be shitting bricks. First land, you're playing against fucking Zen World Champs. It's not... It's not easy. I mean, you could definitely tell nerves were out there for all these guys, but man, once they found their groove, they became good. And I wish they would have had that LG the whole uh, the whole weekend instead of catching heat a little bit too late, you know? Mm, completely agree. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, let's jump into our. What do you guys want to do next? You want to do the shot of the day? Play yeah, of the day. Shot of the day and then predictions. Um, all right, guys, we're gonna get into our shot of the day. This is easily the shot of the day. Um, Split, you want to break it down a bit? Yeah, I mean, you know, we got Gen G versus K Corp. I think for me, heading into this series, this was the one I really wanted to see. Um, both of just like how one of our best teams are doing against K Corp. I mean, look at this control from First Killer jumping up to the ceiling, using that second jump to get in a better position, getting the flip reset and placing it to the left side of the net. That is a perfect shot. Um, yeah, they're already up two goals here, but this also just makes a statement in that game one of like, Gen G is not here to play around. That's exactly what you need here if you're Gen G. Yeah, I mean, Reed, what do you think of the shot? 
I mean, I don't know if people realize how tough this is, but like he's doing this against, you know, Carmine Corp, like maybe one of the best defensive teams in the world. Pops it in open space perfectly, you know, still has a second jump to jump to the roof, times the flip, then uses all, along yeah. with all that, places it on the left side of the net post in like this 4-1, 4-1 in game one, like this is a statement now. This is honestly like one of those shots that just like you would think like your team hits like, oh my God, they're winning. But yeah. uh yeah, this is I mean just this is just first killer like individual talent. Like one thing I wanna play. one thing I wanna point out as well is even after he made that shot, he still had twenty boosts to recover if this somehow doesn't go in. And I love that second jump he yeah, that's to a good get point. up to the ceiling. But I mean that was literally perfection. Like I don't think he could have had a more fluid shot in that position. Yeah, I think the cool thing about this is like it shows first killer. It's like I felt like he didn't have like that goal yet, you know, because when some players go to lands and they're that highly rated, people are looking for that goal. Like Zen always has one. Squishy used to have one back and just there's always those players like yeah. first had a good ass shot. This is one of those who are like, damn, that was a good shot. Like that's one you're gonna remember. Um mm -hmm. so that is our play of the day. Uh, let's go in to our predictions. Remember, fellas, every all these matches start at twelve Eastern tomorrow. So you don't got to fucking, we don't got to wake up at, you know, the matches don't start at 8.30, thankfully. Um, I like the matches being at 12. Do you guys like that? I'm not yeah, waking up at 9 a.m., dude. Not doing all that. This oh is going to help God. everything, like viewership, watch parties. Yeah, the watch, only thing I'm worried yeah. about viewership-wise is I think CS is the exact same time as uh, RL. That's the only thing that's a little bit awkward. And they're both in Copenhagen. But, I mean, I think yeah. regardless of if you're a CS fan or not, like, being up at noon instead of 9 a.m. is it's just much more available to everybody. Um, so first match of the quarterfinals that starts at 12 Eastern. We have mates taking on Gen G. Um, if you guys and remember, guys, this is best of sevens, and teams do get a timeout and they're playing in front of a crowd. So we have different vibes and stuff. Um, how are you guys liking this matchup going up with mates and uh, the one and eight C going at it? Hmm. Uh, bro, I literally said this earlier, but like I keep picking against Alpine, and I'm gonna do it again, gentlemen. I'm gonna pick Gen G. I think we're gonna get <laughs> NA in top four, and uh, you know, I don't know. I think Gen G four two. Uh, I think the crowd is obviously a difference maker. Um, but I don't know. I just. I really do have faith in Genji. I think they're playing good ball, and I think maybe tomorrow's the day it all clicks and they all play super well individually as well, and it just becomes a, a powerhouse of a team. Let's I mean, I, I should be sold on mates. I should be. I don't know if I am. And I also think if I go against Genji, any one of those three players will rip off my arms. But I'm still going to go with mates because Damn. even though they've been, they've been selling me, uh, I really even think, like, man, they just can't keep winning, can they? And they do. Um, and I think Genji look great. I want Genji to win so bad. So either way, I'm happy that NA does well, or my prediction's right. So that's my my dub. I think I think Mates are gonna win this one four two. Um, and if they don't, I'm stoked. But okay. you know, I'm give, give me Mates four two. Ah oh, man, am I bi? Dude, I gotta like be. That? It's gotta be biased to like pick Genji. No, like based off what we've seen. Like I feel like if we didn't, you know, am, are we a little biased? Okay. Well, I have a question. Yeah. <laughs> Will you be wearing a USA onesie tomorrow? Yes or no? Uh, there could be a chance. But I do that for there my people. There could be a chance that I, uh, then that could be NA bias, you know? Yeah, if no, I don't I'm see definitely... Alpha Cap, if I don't see you walking in with, the, you know, the USA onesie, maybe get an eagle on your shoulder, kickstart yeah. my heart playing in the background. If I don't see that, you like Cap, that song? I'm going to be Molly disappointed. Crew? I love um, some Motley Crue. That's but, a Gen G tattoo. <laughs> what about a tattoo of First Killer on your face? That's not a bad one. That's not just having it covering my face. Um, Maybe on your forehead. Yeah, that could work. That could work. I'm gonna take in this one. I'm, you know, I'm not gonna be biased here. Gen G four zero, right? Uh, <laughs> no, nah, but I realistically do think Gen. I don't know why. I'm the same way as you, Reed. I'm like, yeah, mates did good, but fuck it, Gen G. Like it's just one of those, you know. Like I feel like the Maybe talent. It's just I don't know. Crowd. Maybe we're just haters. Maybe we're just, we're haters. just haters, straight up. We really are. Guys, because I said crowd. Strategically like me. You know? Yeah, I mean, Either I said, way I win. I say crowd, and literally it's no way one. So, yeah, I mean, I'm taking Gen G in this. If if mates win this, this is the first series of the day. But if mates win this, then, I mean, shit. What do you? Th if mates win their first series, do you think they go to the damn final, or are you like, oh, they're losing again? Because I'm having I mean, them lose again. <laughs> I, I think I'm having them lose again. 
I mean, yeah. I think I think we should hop into this next one because let's find out who they're playing. Let's find out who they're playing. All right, all right. So we got K. All right, the next series, we'll just go down. Yeah, that's fine. Um, K Corp taking on Falcons. In this series, we have a rematch because Falcons, if you go to round number, what was it, two? Falcons did beat them in game five overtime of two minutes. So, you know, I... Wow, I mean, this is tough. You have a KC who is in form completely. They just absolutely shit on Genji um, to qualify. They were looking incredible. And then you have a Falcons who come off a dub over Vitality who are looking good. I really don't want to go first, but I am going to go can, first. Um, I can take this one. If yeah, you go want. for it. Go for it. Go for it. Man, I think this is my second most excited. Like, this is my this series that I'm second most excited for, right? Um, I think the rematch is going to be really interesting. Um, and I think Falcons have had a good tournament so far. But I think this is where they fall. I think K-Corp's going to come out here. I think they're going to wipe the floor with Falcons. I actually think this is going to be a 4-0 or 4-1. I think Vatira in playoffs is one of the scariest players in the world. And I think he's going to drop like a 1.6, go absolutely insane. Um, and I think K-Corp's going to win this one. Yeah. yeah. I'm gonna go with it. I'm going. I'm going K Corp as well. I think. I think Vati. It's too hard to go against. The dude's made every Sunday for like. If I'm pretty sure like twenty some damn events in a row. So yeah, I'm gonna go K Corp. I think Rise and them have found their groove. But this Falcons team, it would not surprise me at all if they come out and they win this. Damn man. I mean, I I honestly wanted to go K Corp, but chat. Who's with me when we see the Falcons <laughs> soar off? 4-2, K-Corp, off the champs Sunday. Come yeah. on, Rawas, MVP. Uh, so he's got Rawas winning it all, um, apparently. But yeah, so you're Just going, Rawas. would you actually go Falcons? Or would yeah, you... I'll go Falcons 4-3. Really? Okay, okay. yeah, I mean, I they've been that. looking good, so I don't I don't blame you at all. Um, yeah. Fury of Vitality, we have another rematch. Flitz, what, what, would you, uh, what are you thinking on this one? Because they did now, rematch this, each other. And... This is my series of the day. I think this is going to be... A thriller. I have been loving watching Furia play. I keep saying, keep saying, what's it called? I keep saying Lost isn't going to keep it up. I keep saying Furia is not going to be able to keep going. Um, I don't know if they are, but I think one thing for sure is that this is going to be a really good series. Both Gan and Zen on land, both got Aura. They both got the crowd behind them. And I think a lot of people are going to be conflicted like I am here. But give me Furia, man. Holy. I think Vitality is going to fall. I think they're going to. I can't go. I went against Furia yesterday, right? I said they're not going to beat Genji. said Genji's going to take it. I'm not going to make that same mistake, man. I think Furia's going to come out here. It's going to at least game six. Give me Furia 4 2. I don't really think that's that, that crazy of a take because Furia have literally played insane with losses like the highest stat guy after two days. Yan dropped like a 1 1. And. I'm not sold on Rado and Alpha yet. So, based off what I've seen, I'm taking three dudes who I think are playing really good. Also, Drapino was like a, a fan. Drapino was like a fan of Vitality. Do you remember the interview he did? He was like smiling. Right. He was like, I'm just so happy to beat them. It was a really cool interview. It was wholesome. Um, but I would probably go, I'm going to go Fury again. I think they're going to have the, like, I don't know. There's going to have, everyone's going to be cheering for them. Vitality will obviously have fans as well because it's in, but I mean, yeah, I'm going off a of red hot Furia. I'm gonna have them winning. I'll have them winning. I'll have them winning four two. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, damn man, y'all are y'all are making me. I mean, do whatever you think. I mean, in a tough spot. I mean, the nah, with this one, I'm I'm gonna go Furia. Vitality haven't really. They they haven't had that moment like KC has, yeah. um, where they kind of like turn something on and been like, okay, this is the team we've been waiting for. And they've had five series, so they've had a lot of time to do it. Uh, and yeah, Furia is just on another level right now. They're you can tell they're kind of just like feeling it. Simple as that. So I got Furia four two. Um, score yeah. doesn't matter much, but yeah, I think Furia is just the better team right now. Yeah, I agree. And then moving into our last, or not last, but in here, um, the order goes. What is it? It's Genji the series, and then oh yeah, it's our second match of the day. So BDS G2, these teams played against each other actually today and BDS was better than them. And when we were talking about it, we said G2 just didn't look like they were themselves really, like fully like the ones we're expecting. And BDS are playing solid, Exotic's playing good. Um, are you guys taking BDS in this or are you taking G2 you leaning towards? 
this one this one's so tough for me man i want nothing but g2 success i really yeah. want to see both na on top but also i think i think that roster of g2 like i said earlier they have so much raw potential but there's nothing that they've done this tournament that tells me i should be going g2 they barely make it out of swiss the two team the three teams that they beat are two oce teams and mina two who didn't look that strong i just don't think in any logical way I can go G2. And it sucks because I want them to win super yeah. badly. Uh, but I think BDS, as long as Drawley, uh, as a, a Drawley just plays decent, I think BDS will win this unless G2 comes and steps up. And G2, if anyone from G2 is listening, I really hope that they do step up. I really want them to win, but I have BDS 4-1. Um, yeah, I mean, Reed, go for it. Uh, yeah. No, I'm with Flitz. Nothing has told me G2 is going to beat BDS, but I am going G2, NA on top, <laughs> fucking taking down BDS finally in the G2 legacy. Um, Yeah, I don't know. Maybe tomorrow's the day where just fucking all the players are just like Got a good feeling. Just I, I don't good. know, because BDS isn't a team where I think like they're on, like it's KC where it's like, holy, you have to, you know, play your best Rock League. I think BDS, you can play some pretty good Rocket League and win. They're they're kind of more capitalizing on your failure. So if G2 just, you know, plays somewhat well, then I think they take it. 4-2, 4-3. It's going to be tough. It's not going to be easy. But G2 has all the potential in the world, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Talent-wise, I think G2's got more, like, raw talent. But I think BDS has been better. And the resume... Um, dude, you know what? They really don't have that crazy of a resume either. They beat Elevate, they lost to Mates, and then they beat Power. Yeah, so and then they, they, beat, they beat did G2. beat G2. You know, they're playing the team that they already beat. And I think that, I think they also got like the mental edge as well. I mean, does this, I mean, I know for me this factors in, but G2 now is the team that lost and can look through what caused them issues. That is true. So that is it's true. a lot easier than BDS who can look through and see success or not see as many issues because they, they beat them. Where G2 is like, you know what, like, we noticed this, this, and this during our series. Like, I think if we clean this up, we'll be fine. And just because of it, like, they already have, they might have a slight edge. But uh, I don't know. I think there's, because at this level, all teams are looking at, you know, the, the replays of how they lost and specifically what that team did to beat them. So I think G2 obviously is a smart enough team to do that. And they're good enough to execute on those ideas or those, you know, solutions to their errors that caused them to lose. Look, Kago, I agree with everything you just said, but there's one thing you're not considering. Monkey Moon on a crowd. That dude's a different animal. Yeah, he, you know he does make, know that. He that does go far demon. every time. Um, and, and like because... I said earlier, too, like I think if Drawley doesn't, like I think if Drawley just gets a little bit, I think that's the biggest wild card. I think he's always been the wild card for BDS, but I think especially now that he's in, in his first crowd environment, that's going to be interesting. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I, I, I don't, I didn't really give my prediction yet, but I don't really know who to go for. But um, fuck it, go on G two. Okay, there you go. Yeah, I get think a series score. I'm gonna go G two win. I think they are gonna be better than they have been, and I'm gonna go uh, four two. I'm gonna go four three. I do think this could go the distance easily. Okay. So yeah, so we have some split ones, some same ones. Um, but yeah, guys, welcome to the quick chat. Last question. <laughs> Go for it. Okay, I want everyone in chat to remember this. Kept Flitz, I want y'all to pick one player who has the best day tomorrow. Any quarterfinal, doesn't matter. What mm. player stands out the most is like, you know what, that dude helped his team win the, like, the most. Who do you got? See, when we asked this question last time, I didn't want to go and pick a top guy. But yeah. there's only top there's a, guys Yeah, left. there's only top guys. So, yeah. I'm going to go with the team that I'm most excited to watch. I think Yan is going to step up. I think, you know, it's been the last show a little bit, and Yan's starting to breach out, especially we saw it in that Gen G series. I think Yan's going to take over. I think Yan's going to go insane, put Vitality in his back pocket. He's going to take him home to the semis. That's a good That's a good shout. Um, I mean, I'll be honest. I don't really know who I want to go with. <laughs> All right, you need some time? Well, I, yeah. You want me to buy some? Okay, well... Uh, yesterday I went with Atomic from G2 and I don't think he played that great. Um, so we're going to flip over to the other NA team and <laughs> I'm going to go first killer. I think first killer is like do a major win. Um, and I think this weekend is kind of like if Gen G wants a chance to do it, he's going to have to be the main guy. 
especially for instance, like a hot team like Gentlemates, uh, they're going to need someone to step it up. And first killer is the most likely on that team. Doesn't seem like he ever plays bad, but maybe he goes to that next level tomorrow and helps them secure the win. I like that. Yeah, my I think my big impact player of the day that's going to have to have a huge day to put him through is I think it has to be somebody on G2. I have the G2 winning, so I'm going to go Dan. I think if Dan can okay. play like that elite level that we're used to, I think all three of them need to play good, but I think if like if one of them is going absolute like is playing insane, like very elite high level, um, whether it's noticeable on the field, I think if it's Daniel doing it, I think they'll win that series. I think no matter what, I just want not an all EU top four, because not only is it gonna be boring, if I see like a tadpole tweet of saying like NA is like the sixth best region, I think I'm just gonna like snap my phone in half. So as long as off. someone wins from NA, we'll be okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think uh I think that wraps up the uh I think that wraps up the quick chat. Anything else you guys want to add? Any thoughts? Anything about Are tomorrow? Now we only really got the good stuff, chat. Now we got the good stuff. Yeah, I mean you're not wrong. Swiss has been I mean, I've been watch partying. I know you guys have been watching some and stuff. Um these matches have been so fucking long, these Swiss stages where it's like Holy shit! Like I am, ag I'm ready just to have four matches tomorrow, watch them and just vibe, because they these things have been, I mean these things have been hell, bro. I mean they're fun to watch. Don't get me wrong, but also without a crowd, it's like, it just doesn't feel as legit if that makes sense. Like I'm ready for tomorrow, the full shebang. It <laughs> just shit on them. Oh, I don't, dude, guys.